It's been a year since Yotpo joined forces with the Sofia-based SMS Bump, a startup providing SMS marketing and automation. And today, they became a unicorn after closing an investment round of $208 million. How did it all start? What is it like to be part of a unicorn company? And what was the role of the team here based in Sofia are going to share with us today the founders of SMS Bump, Georgi Petrov and Mikhail Starchev. First of all, is there anything different about being part of a unicorn company? Not really. Uh, things are pretty much the same, business as usual, coffee tastes the same, so we just continue growing the same way we do. We use the same rules, just the spotlight is different. With uh, greater power comes greater responsibility. Besides that, I think everything is pretty much the same. We're trying to run the company as uh, we used to back in the days and uh, also ever since we became uh, part of Yotpo, uh, this hasn't changed much so um, I, would, I would guess just the goals are more ambitious than before. Let's do a throwback uh, to all the way down to the launch of SMS Bump three years ago. How did it all start? Yeah, we had a, an agency, like company, who was doing uh, licensing and service business and then we had SMS Bump at some point, we decided to go into software as a service, which was the SMS Bump idea and at that point we decided just to launch something uh, and iteration by iteration we found that our way on SMS Bump would be the platform vision, so we want uh, the marketing side of the SMS, uh, this is where we can add more value because at the end of the day it's SMS Bump, but our added value is uh, the marketing itself, not the SMS itself. We were targeting a few different channels uh, and there were strong contenders, uh, the likes of uh, Facebook Messenger, uh, email um, and WhatsApp, text message, text messaging. Uh, so what we figured out was that the one which is uh, prevailingly available on every phone, as soon as you purchase it, is uh, text messaging. It's, uh, uh, it has uh, not a single point of failure uh, and, and it has an astonishingly high open rate and uh, read rate as well, hence click-through rate following that. This is how actually we, we decided to uh, relaunch uh, SMS as a communication channel. Did you expect to grow so fast and so much uh, back then, three years ago? What was your ambition in the beginning? Yes and no. Absolutely no. Um, we, we believed we were onto something the moment uh, we got the first responses from customers, the moment they started recommending the app to different friends of theirs. At some point, at very early stage, we also realized that this can grow huge. So yes, I might say we expected in the very beginning probably no, because we were on a heavy R&D phase. Just thinking out loud that we would be a part of uh, a global company with offices around the world, uh, which is growing at a very healthy rate and uh, being able to represent all this uh, collective wisdom and uh, eight or nine years in the making of uh, Yotpo on uh, Bulgarian soil is uh, nothing short of a dream come true for us. Looking back from today's perspective, which are the most memorable or the most important turning points for you as founders of SMS Bump? I can just uh, remember one turning point. It was the, the time we decided to go into SaaS, in software as a service, as a, as a business model, and kind of uh, push back and uh, over time abandon the service and the licensing business that we have. That was a huge decision that we took on the expense of uh, many other things that were in the pipeline. I am sure that uh, you've learned immensely from the experience of the past three years. Is there something that you would rather do differently if you had the opportunity to rewind time? To be honest, we, unlike some other entrepreneurs, they will share like a nice story what they would have done differently. We don't have like a major blowout in our career paths, uh, but we have many smaller things that we might do differently. And one of them might be just the time uh, probably we postponed this decision to go into, into the right business model. SMS Bump was acquired by Yotpo a year ago. What was the impact on the business? We still call it a merger, by the way, but technically it's acquisition. It's a, it's a huge success and why we call it a merger? Because we actually joined forces to achieve something together. The synergy is tremendous. 
I believe that back in the days we were uh, sprinting, now we're more or less running and uh, we have uh, good coaches to help us uh, in this uh, marathon. Besides this, um, I think we are starting to divide and conquer. We're establishing many different units and uh, different procedures to help us scale. So uh, whilst everyone was a generalist and everyone was doing uh, everything, under the sun, uh, what we're doing right now is appointing the right people to the positions where we believe they uh, belong. In a nutshell, we're going from a startup to a scale-up. You did manage to achieve extraordinary growth in the past 12 months. Um, can you tell me a bit more of how the team in Sofia contributed to this growth? I believe we were very uh, collective. From the inception of the product, uh, we did set a clear vision once uh, the whole product market fit was um, established. And from there on, I believe everyone was uh, hustling and grinding really, really hard, just making sure that uh, what we're doing is with the um, utmost um, Importance. What led to the success? Uh, many factors, but mainly the huge contribution of the, the, the same people with whom we viewed the product. You're now expanding the R&D operations here in Sofia. Can you tell us a bit more about the long-term vision of your home for the hub here in Sofia? We're like uh, betting big on expanding our office uh, in Sofia, which is uh, mainly driven by the R&D people as well. Uh, but we do have other departments like we have uh, product which we're expanding, we have various business departments which we're expanding as well. Uh, it's it's uh, super uh, important to mention that more or less we're not, not like a R&D, typical R&D company here, we're just uh, R&D led and we have uh, more uh, like uh, product decisions being taken here. It will be very heavy on uh, R&D, however uh, we're betting big on uh, marketing which is also run from here. We do have a support team um, and uh, many other functions amongst the ones listed. We will be enforcing and making uh, possible many uh, new uh, ideas and, and uh, creating many new technologies that will be part of this communication channel. I think many of us wonder why the good old SMS is still a relevant medium for communication given all the opportunities that are out there. Can you imagine a near future where it is not? Definitely not. SMS is a decentralized technology uh, with decentralized protocols. Of course, uh, you would hear many nice ideas about the uh, this uh, company A, B and C that will kill the email, that will kill the SMS, this doesn't happen and won't happen. The projections are just the opposite. What we're after is not SMS only per se, but uh, just a communication ecosystem of tools that work in synergy. So uh, in the end of the day, we believe that communication would be the tip of the sword which will slay the the dragon and uh, not solely SMS. So I think it's a conglomerate of uh, different tools which are working towards the greater, uh, the greater goal. Can you give us a bit further insights of what makes your post all-in-one e-commerce platform so special? What are the main advantages for D2C brands? Uh, the, the Yopa platform is so special mainly because it connects many different functionalities. It gives them in front of the, of the brands on a plate and gives them the opportunity to be as powerful as marketplaces like Amazon and other. So basically empowering uh, these merchants to use their own technology, uh, their uh, own in-house uh, customer base for their own marketing purposes is uh, the added value that we give and not rely on uh, external uh, factors like Amazon, for example. Yeah, I would say in uh, David versus Goliath world, where essentially you have the conglomerates uh, as Amazon, as e eBay, we believe that Shopify, BigCommerce and other players are essentially uh, arming the rebels, the ones that want to get themselves uh, in the space. Uh, and uh, what we're doing is uh, essentially providing them with all the tools and weapons for them to be able to succeed in this uh, noisy environment. And um, just like in every army you need uh, marksmen and swordsmen, uh, then the different tools can collaborate 
uh, amongst one another. And uh, what, what, what we are trying to build is uh, just the one-stop shop for being successful in today's uh, noisy environment. Finally, if you could uh, give one piece of advice to the entrepreneurs who are out there, who are currently in the beginning of their journey as founders, what would it be? I would say find something that gives value to other people, build it. Tip one, make sure it scales. And tip two, make sure you love it because you won't need to work. Great advice. Maybe being persistent, uh, the more books I read about successful technological moguls, it's the same story. You pretty much uh, hustle and grind for a lot of years and then uh, something happens and you're an overnight success. Uh, so I believe that having this perseverance and persistence is uh, something that I would uh, recommend. Besides being uh, curious, of course, and uh, finding what you're good at. And now, let's talk to the very first investor of SMS Bomb and learn why 11 Ventures trusted the founders from their very beginning in 2017. Why did 11 decide to invest in SMS Bomb three years ago before else? And what was the investor logic behind it? The investor logic was that we very much like the founders. It was uh, driven by, by the people. Uh, they were referred to us by uh, a portfolio company CEO and uh, the moment we first met them we were like very very excited about partnering with them we saw the spark in their eyes we saw the ambition we saw the curiosity and uh, at that point in time we didn't care as much what they were doing we knew that there is a long path in front of us but we really liked the, the team do you remember their first pitch deck uh, did you see the unicorn potential back then I don't think we were discussing any type of unicorn potential and I am pretty sure they didn't have a pitch deck. It was a, an informal uh, meeting, but you could see the drive, you could see the, the intellect of the founders, the desire to build a good business, uh, you could see their value system and this is more or less what we found uh, convincing. Would you say that the now that they have this unicorn valuation, something is changing. Why is this event uh, important for the future development of the Bulgarian ecosystem? SMS bump becoming part of uh, Yotpo is uh, a great event uh, in, in many ways. One, because uh, the, the SMS bump team will uh, learn a lot. Uh, by virtue of being part of a larger, more sophisticated, high-growth uh, organization. Uh, interesting international uh, company with a lot of uh, great prospects. The other benefit is that they have a growing team uh, in Sofia. The network is expanding, so in many ways uh, the success of SMS Bump and Yotpo uh, is attributing value to the local ecosystem. What are the traits of the SMS Bond's founders you think future entrepreneurs should emulate if they want to become at least as successful as SMS Bond? I've, I've consistently found that uh, high quality entrepreneurs emanate several qualities. One is uh, commitment to, to their vision, uh, knowing why they're doing what they're doing at the moment. Having the intellectual capacity and humility to understand uh, the signals of the universe, uh, learning from customers, learning from all the stakeholders with which they engage, learning from their own uh, mistakes, uh, being humble about it, understanding that failure is a part of the process, um, and also having resilience. Growing a company, going through all the uh, pains is, uh, is a difficult process and many times the difference between those who make it and those who don't is uh, how early you gave up.